Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, so, for the first time ever on FVD Elements, uh, I am doing a completely custom uh, element that, uh, as far as I know, has not been ever seen on a coaster before. This one was specifically requested by Nicholas Labbe. Uh, so, Nick, here you go, man. Uh, I did the off axis uh, sort of Fury 325 a turnaround. Uh, this was an interesting element actually, I enjoyed doing something that uh, has not been seen before and trying to make it look fairly realistic. Um, I, I did this, it took me about 45 minutes to do this just to figure it all out, plus I had to, to do the little bit of coaster going up into it, the track that's going up into it, and I tried to create that sort of uh, back and forth Fury uh, 325 feel. So. Um, it wasn't too hard. Uh, not having a shape that I was really trying to emulate uh, means that uh, I could decide exactly how it should look. I think I could probably do better if I fooled around with this for a few hours, maybe. Really try to get the shaping down 100% correct the way uh, I think it probably would look. But it rides pretty well, um, and I think this will probably help Nick, Nick out with what he was trying to do. So if it does, let me know, Nick. Uh, but you can see right here that uh, it's just basically the Fury 325 turnaround and then instead of having it uh, in the same twisted sideways the same way that you go into the helix it reverses at the top and you've got an, a sort of off axis airtime moment. Excuse me. And I like the way it rides actually. Uh, we will, what we'll do is in just a moment we'll go live and then after that we will actually take a ride on this in No Limits 2 and see what it looks like. Uh, so hold on just a minute and we will come back and actually look at the graph for this thing. Alright, so here we are looking at uh, the actual graph of the turn which goes from about here to here. This little section right through here is right where we start to go up into the turn and as usual just to do a really quick change of direction. The way I normally do it is to use a quartic function that dips down to about the, uh, since you're obviously, you're coming into it from a turn that's got positive G's right here, uh, I just do a quartic function that dips down to about one uh, normal G and at the same time you do the roll. So that just results in a really quick roll right there and then we go up into the uh, turnaround. So what you want to do is when you're establishing this roll uh, into the turnaround, and this is the same with a Fury 325, which I will probably do a separate video even though it's just about the same thing. Uh, it looks a little bit different though. You just have to make sure here when you're doing the actual uh, total value of the turn, just get it to where you want it, uh, where it makes sense. And one thing I discovered as I was doing this, let me get that back to 167, negative 167, because that's where it was. Uh, one thing I discovered when I was doing this is it made a little bit more sense, and I it's been a while since I've done a third Fury 325 type turn, so this may be the case as well for it, but it made a little bit more sense to have this uh, positive G sort of uh, going down a little bit. So it goes from, I think, about 3.2-ish, 3.3, down around 2.8 and that just makes it not so tight at the top because obviously as you're losing speed uh, in order to maintain a 3.5 uh, normal or 3.5 normal force you have to get tighter and tighter and I wanted it to loosen up just a little bit uh, and I did also just alter the direction a little bit so that uh, in the, the turning direction here let's get off the ride actually come back over here I just altered the turning direction a little bit just so it, it started heading more upwards. And then you get into uh, where you're actually starting to go into the outward bank. And this is the part where I thought it was gonna be uh, difficult. I could have actually, I think, put uh, some laterals here. I think if I put some laterals here, I could really change the shape of this and look, make it look a little bit more like Fury 325. Uh, the problem here is that with no laterals whatsoever, uh, it's, it's sort of flattening out before it does that. So uh, that's one thing to think about, Nick, if you are attempting to do this in FED again, especially if you're not going for B&M. You can see here I used a B&M track, so uh, I was thinking more along the lines of what B&M would do, and I don't think they would have lats. Uh, so I didn't put any in there, but I think you could get away with somewhere around in here, maybe, uh, right where around where this starts, 
if you could just do a little bit of lats right here, it would change the shape of this tremendously. So give that a try and see what happens there. So, but basically all I did was take the uh, the normal force down to just under zero, just because, uh, again, I'm using B&M here and they don't tend to do eject or air time like you would find on an RMC where you're more likely to see these sort of off axis uh, hills. And then finally we just sort of gradually fade back to uh, no banking whatsoever right here. Now, so another reason that I did this with this just going down to zero, I did try it with a, a higher degree of ejector air. And I discovered that the moment uh, when you actually ride it was not quite as dramatic as it is on Fury 325 when you ride that coaster. So here you see it lasts just a little bit longer and then it smoothly rolls back down to, uh, what is my cat doing? Uh, and it just smoothly rolls back down to uh, normal, no uh, banking whatsoever. So that was my one little bit that I did to uh, make it just a little bit more like BNN. I wanted it to be a little bit more dramatic. It doesn't actually look that banked up here, but if you are actually riding, I had it at about 60 degrees at first, and it was just a little bit too much. But if you're actually on it, you see here the roll is about 47 degrees right here, um, and that's pretty significant. So I like it the way it is. Uh, maybe I could work on it being a little bit higher because we're only about 118 feet right here. So it could be a little bit higher just to be a little bit slower. Uh, it's going 42 miles an hour. Uh, it could be a little bit higher and be a little bit slower uh, just to make the moment even more dramatic. I could fool around and do that as well. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with it. If I were to ever use this on a coaster, I would probably take more time with it. But for now, it looks pretty good. I think it'll help Nick out. And then I just kind of put an airtime hill here just to do something uh, right after the turn. So that's going to be about it for in terms of how to do this graph. As usual, I will upload it uh, as part. It'll be in the description, the link to it, in case you want to look at the graph uh, or use it for your own purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and import this into No Limits 2. We'll take a quick ride on it just to see what it looks like. That's going to be it for this episode. I will talk to you next time. Take care and enjoy the ride.